Hi Mariners, uh, this is Mariners Digest Mohan Das. Today, I will give a brief uh, introduction to first aid. It will be useful for uh, elementary first aid course, also uh, medical first aid course, uh, plus even general public also, it will be useful. For uh, your information, I have been trained by St. John's Ambulance, Mumbai uh, twice. Then twice I was trained in uh, Indian Maritime University uh, by doctors okay. and uh, on various occasions voluntarily I used to go and sit and attend these classes whenever I get an opportunity. So that is how I gain knowledge uh, for first aid. So for mariners it is a course, you have uh, three different certificates uh, for the support staff, uh, we have uh, elementary first aid. Then for the officers, we have uh, medical first aid and uh, chief officer and master, they undergo medic care, master's medic care. Okay. So, unlike other courses, this first aid is so important this knowledge once you possess you are able to give first aid then it is useful for the society for your home for your neighborhood anywhere not only on board ship in fact it should be taught in the school level even right from 5th standard, 6th standard, they can start learning first aid. It is not difficult at all. It is simply about your body and there is no calculations involved as far as the first aid goes. Okay, There is no graph and formula and all that. It is about your body. So, everyone should know and it is so simple. If you know the first aid procedure, you can save life. You can save life. I will tell you, say India is uh, a large country with a lot of population. Uh, too many accidents taking place in highways. We all must have come across the ambulance sound. Okay. So, what happens in a remote location when there is an accident, when uh, people are severely injured, bleeding, lying on the road, the people gather there, they offer their own vehicle, car, auto or two-wheeler to take them to hospital or they call some ambulance from the remote location. So, some of the ambulances, they do not uh, carry medicos. I understand when you dial 108 in India, you get medico also along with the driver. You need a medico in the ambulance, this is important point. So, that is why before you offer any transportation yourself, if you have a medico, you can give the first aid, then carry him to the hospital. Okay. So, severe bleeding, you offer your vehicle, you call the ambulance without a medico, he is taken to hospital. Half an hour, one hour drive maybe to the general hospitals. So, as soon as they reach there in the emergency area, they are taken inside and the doctor is checking up and writing only two words. You know what are, they, what are these two words? Brought dead. 
the people those who call for ambulance or offered the vehicle and send them to the hospital they are not aware they don't get the feedback that the injured victim has died already on the way because it is a basic knowledge of a state nobody knows first you control the bleeding then you dispatch him to hospital if required if required only so for that you must have fundamental knowledge of how to control the bleeding okay so like that if somebody is unconscious suddenly for various reasons and uh, laying down we don't know what to do so they say cardiac arrest that means your heart has stopped functioning so if the heart is stopped functioning it is not pumping blood the oxygenized blood to the cells and more importantly to the organs like brain the heart itself and other part of the body right so if the brain is not getting oxygen it will start dying within few minutes that is why an unconscious patient will have to be attended immediately within minutes so an unconscious person with a cardiac arrest you can save him if you know the first aid and the first aid is not difficult so first aid first aider basically should know this basic life support we so called basic life support for an unconscious patient uh, victim you can give life if you know what to do then that is number one priority very simple i'll give an introduction you will learn in the classroom okay then bleeding control number 3 burn injury everybody come across burn injury at home but anywhere okay then choking children swallow some coins marbles adults eating non vegetarian bone gets stuck in the uh, throat choking is very serious thing people can die of choking okay so these are the few things if you know confidently if you can do the first aid you can save life okay right so let me start with the very important one about that basic life support for an unconscious person so if uh, you come across some unconscious person suddenly in front of you or somebody tells you there is an unconscious person there and uh, you are a first aider what you should know so the very first thing is we call it a primary survey of any uh, accident incident where you are going to administer first aid there is a primary survey what is that primary survey it consists of uh, d r s a b c d d r s a b c d you can call an abbreviation doctors a b c d d r s a b c d so each letter has got a meaning d means danger danger means danger for the victim danger for the first aid uh, danger for the people around in, uh, that area so you should uh, before administering your first aid you, you must make sure that the area is safe okay that area is safe that is danger for example for a mariner in enclosed space some casualty is there you want to administer first aid whether you see if the area is safe for you to give first aid there or remove him from that uh, danger area 
Similarly, engine room is a huge fire, two, three people are unconscious, inhale, you smoke. So, he wanted to do first aid. You find out whether that area is safe or away from the area you will have to give, shift him uh, to the uh, first aid room, the hospital room or outside the engine room, somewhere before you give the first aid. So, that is letter D. In the outside world, in the middle of the road, somebody is laying and the traffic and all is jammed. So, if you want to administer first aid, you bring him to the side of the road, so that traffic is cleared. Okay. Then you can administer first aid. So, that is letter D, D for danger. Then, R, the second letter is R, R for response. R for response. So, if there is an unconscious person, you found out that that area is safe. So, now you will have to find out whether he is the, the victim is going to give any response. So, as you are approaching, you can, if you know the name, you can call him by name. David, what happened to you? Why are you lying down? Like that, you talk to him. If you don't know the name, hello, what happened to you? Why are you here? What happened to you? Like that, you start asking some questions find out if he is uh, responding. So, there is no response for your voice, then go and kneel down besides his uh, body, okay. Then shake his shoulders. Then also you start asking some question, what happened to you? Who are you? Now that is something you ask, what is your name? Uh, shake his shoulders. So, for that also there is no response, they can, then you can give some pain and see, the ear lobes, ear lobes you can pinch, both the ear lobes you pinch and see, uh, is giving any response. Sometimes he may move his head, shake his leg, move the body, something, some response or open his eyes, okay. So, by giving pain also, there is no response, then he is an un you can decide that he is an unresponsive victim. So, you go system systematically in first aid. So, this is your primary survey, you, you found out that uh, this victim is unresponsive. Now, what are you going to do? This is the stage where you are going to give the basic life support. So, first uh, there are two organs in the body, you should know the heart and the lungs, heart and lungs. If they do not function, you are dead. Heart is pumping blood with oxygen to the entire body, this is a general knowledge, everyone should know. It is pumping blood ever since a child is born until death, your heart continuously pumping blood with oxygen. Blood contains oxygen, nutrients, okay, it is supplied to the entire body tissues, so they are alive, okay. And more importantly, it is supplying blood with oxygen to the brain. If that uh, brain does not get oxygen, means the brain will start dying then person will die at ultimately. So, the heart pumping blood, lungs along with heart lungs also participating in the basic life. So, it is purifying the blood, uh, it is uh, purifying the blood and giving back to the heart. So, the lungs also doing an important function in the body. So, for the lungs to function, that victim should inhale air through the nose. Okay. So, for that, initially when an unconscious person is there, when he is, you found out that he is unresponsive, now you are proceeding for the basic life support. The first thing you will do is to open the airway. Sometimes 
maybe he vomited or there was a blood something is blocking in the mouth itself or the tongue itself can block the airway uh, some uh, blood or vomit also can block the airway so how do you open the airway he keep one hand on the forehead then two fingers from the other hand on the chin then you push the head back head tilt chin lift head tilt chin lift so by doing that if your tongue was blocking the airway it will go back if some foreign object was there you can see once you open you can see if you can take out you can take out also without pushing it inside okay so once you clear the airway some people will suddenly start breathing okay so even after clearing the airway if the victim is not breathing then you will have to give rescue breath so these days you have some machines to give rescue breath so mouth to mouth the rescue breath they say so if at all you don't have a uh, rescue breath equipment you can give mouth to mouth with a mask okay so rescue breath give two rescue breath you will have to give then afterwards you will have to give the chest compression chest compression so chest compression you can see the video about cardio pulmonary resuscitation cpr there are many videos even i have in my youtube there are videos okay you can see cpr and aed both together in one video at given other videos like sanjan samblan's videos are there you can watch them okay so you give 30 chest compression at the rate of 100 to 100 beats at the depth of 5 to 6 cm or 2 to 2 and a half inch deep so it is deep and very fast fast and deep so this you let unless you practice you will not get this so during the classroom they give a practical uh, workshop they will make you to do it practically you will have to do it and learn it so this uh, cpr consists of 30 chest compression and two rescue breath 30 is to 2 so as you are giving this some people maybe one or two percent when you give chest compression what actually happens instead of the victim his heart is stopped because that condition is called cardiac arrest cardiac arrest means heart stopped it's not pumping blood so you are by compressing his heart in the middle chest middle of the chest what you are doing is you are pumping the blood with oxygen to the brain the heart itself and other organs and the entire body the function of that victim heart you are trying to do mechanically from outside it is so important this you have to start doing within 2 3 minutes within 2 3 minutes as soon as you come to know the patient is uh, unresponsive we will have to start with this that is why it is called basic life support okay so you start with uh, 30 is to 2 chest compression you ask somebody to get an aed automated external defibrillator that's a small computer machine these days you can see in malls also in cinema theaters you can see where lot large number of public are there there you can see in the public um, uh, hospitals you can see clinics you can see on board ship also it is carried okay and aed anybody can use not necessarily you should be a first aider it can be used by any public anybody can use because the moment you bring that equipment when you are administering cpr cpr you should never stop so wait for this the aed machine that come 
keep it beside the victim you are doing the cpr 30 is to 2 switch on the aed that will start giving voice prompt it will give voice instruction okay it has got two thin pads and uh, the diagram where to paste also the image is pasted on the pad itself it's like thicker stickers you can see in my video and other videos Sanjan Samran's video also you can see there are many other people had given uh, this video okay uh, there is one safe station in Australia safe station they are giving 3d video for CPR 3d video for AED you can watch them okay very nice videos so AED will give instructions that pad you will have to apply in the bare skin if the victim is wearing obviously you will be wearing some cloth that you will have to remove it or cut it open the bare skin you apply but with minimum interference to CPR the chest compression should never stop the moment you take out your hand what happens is brain is not getting oxygen you should remember that okay so for within two three minutes you start the CPR and get the AED as soon as possible within 10 minutes if you are not applying this AED and CPR once the brain is dead you cannot revoke again the maximum time is 10 minutes this you should know it is a general knowledge so when somebody is unconscious and unresponsive you start with the chest CPR then connect the AED once you put the pad that will start giving instruction it will analyze the heart rhythm it will analyze the heart rhythm inside there is a uh, ECG machine all of you know echocardiogram uh, so that machine is there inside the AED it will it'll analyze your heart rhythm and find and it will if required deliver a shock about 3000 volts of DC ok uh, it will deliver a shock for a very little time 0 0.001 of a minute okay that that itself is enough for uh, a 100 watt bulb to glow for 25 seconds so that voltage dc voltage shock will be given that time you should not be touching the victim's body nobody should be nearby also so first aider should warn everybody not to touch the victim cpr momentarily stopped so it is giving delivered the shock then after that that machine itself will advise you to continue with cpr you start with CPR because what you are doing with the CPR you are sending oxygenized blood to the brain and the heart itself both requires oxygenized blood okay so this is what you are doing by chest compression so by administering uh, the AED shock you may come to your heart may be revived the shots they say up to eight times it can deliver so it will keep on analyzing and advising you uh, again and again it may give shock sometime most of the time with one or two shocks people heart will start functioning normally so this is how you can save a life and this is not difficult at all in the classroom you learn you see the videos okay so many videos are there safe station you watch 3d version of cpr and aed senjans ambulance cpr aed you watch all reliable people like red cross senjans ambulance safe station the us fire brigade they all got very nice videos about uh, medical first aid you can watch them all okay my videos are there you can watch them also for all this CPR, uh, bleeding control, burns, for everything I had given the important videos also in Mariner's Digest YouTube, we watched them. Okay, that is about uh, 
with a primary survey basic life support cpr aed where you are saving life okay the next comes bleeding control uh, before i go to that at any stage when you are doing the primary survey or when you are administering cpr or when you are connected aed at any instance during this process if the victim shows some response then what are you supposed to do put the victim in recovery position there is the recovery position you can watch in my video also there are other videos also explaining recovery position it's a very comfortable position so that the victim will easily breathe okay so at any stage during your primary survey or during the cpr or during the aed you put him in recovery position but after connecting aed if you are going to put him in uh, recovery position because this is the heart is functioning do not remove the pad let the pad be connected let the machine be connected okay but put him in the recovery position so these are all general knowledge you can save life within 2 3 minutes of a person becoming unconscious for any reason you can give life and it is not very difficult okay at this instance i'll tell you there is a indian medical guide by red cross and st john samblers uh, publication a pdf version is available in the internet you can download it's purely first aid it will give you enough knowledge about first aid okay then for the mariners the international medical guide for ships published by world health organization international maritime organization and international labor organization all the three international international bodies have published that book which is carried on board every ship that pdf version also you can download freely that book contains not only first aid it will give you the medication also so you can learn a lot from that book from that indian medical guide okay so you watch you download both of them first aid is essential you learn the first aid teach the people at home teach the neighborhood teach the elderly people old people young people ladies everyone should know first aid otherwise unnecessarily you will be under stress and uh, running for any small reason also to the hospital to the doctor if you know first aid you can be confident okay this is not not so serious we can treat it at home okay so that kind of knowledge everybody should have when accident takes place you must be able to control the bleeding everyone should know and controlling bleeding is not very difficult that is the topic i'm going to tell you briefly now okay so control of bleeding so to know the controlling of bleeding you should know how the blood is distributed in our body so already i mentioned heart is pumping the blood okay heart is pumping the blood to the entire body from head to foot there are uh, three tubes which distribute this blood the first one is artery artery is coming out of a uh, heart it is carrying the blood from the heart and distributing the blood to the entire body artery so that is a good blood that has got oxygen that has got nutrient that color of the blood will be bright red color okay so artery so this is general knowledge artery is coming out of the heart it is distributing the blood to head to foot to entire body all the tissues are getting okay and it contains uh, oxygen and nutrients and the color of the blood is bright red color because of oxygen oxygen gives the color bright red color okay after distribution 
on the return path the waste and the carbon dioxide is carried by another tube set of tubes called veins veins that carries carbon dioxide and waste so the carbon dioxide gives the color the color of vein the venous bleeding is dark red dark red color okay and the connection between this uh, vein and the artery is a very very thin uh, tubes they are known as capillaries they are capillaries so capillaries usually in the entire body and the surface of the body you will find capillaries okay so this is the network of uh, tubes which is distributing your blood so it's so simple it is general knowledge a fifth class student can understand this artery vein capillary very simple right so now bleeding control capillary bleeding what is the symptom capillary bleeding if children are playing they are sometimes they fall on the ground and the surface of the skin is scratched okay only the skin is little scratch the blood will just show up skin is gone blood is showing up that is capillary bleeding sometimes maybe the adults are hitting somewhere some corners few drops of blood will come it will stop on its own capillary bleeding it is not continuous bleeding it is stopped okay so in such occasions you know the symptom of capillary bleeding it is stopping or it is just visible that's all it is not continuously coming out of the body so it is no danger you need not to go to a doctor if the children if they are getting like these bruises Uh, okay if uh, they have fallen on the road side there may be some dirt and all you can wash it with soap no harm wash it with soap and apply an antiseptic cream cover that area why you are covering that knowledge you must have once the skin is out bacterial infection will come so you cover that area nicely we already applied antiseptic cream you need not to see a doctor at all for any minor injury you carry the child because child is precious for you this uh, you do not know the first aid so blood is coming out you take um, take the child to the doctor not necessary you know what it is that is why first aid is essential for everybody to know okay so that is a capillary bleeding first aid control finished clean it apply antiseptic cream cover it finished that's all it will not pain much and all you need not to give a painkiller also okay then venous bleeding for example let us say in the lower arm there is a cut what is the symptom of bleeding from vein venous bleeding <laughs> slowly continuously it will be flowing as we as i mentioned the color of the blood will be dark red dark red next time when for any reason they take a sample of your blood you watch what color it is you can confirm with them uh, so if you know it is a dark red color you can ask him this is from the vein isn't it so the medic will know whoever the lab assistant who is taking the blood he will know he will confirm it okay dark red color from the vein it is continuously flowing so what is the bleeding control now how to control this bleeding the first point is you apply direct pressure on the wound itself if there is no foreign object sticking to it like a knife or a nail or a you know wooden piece or something is sticking embedded then you should not remove it 
it is acting as a plug okay so where do you apply pressure in that condition you put a clean cloth or dressing around it and both the side you apply the pressure but if there is no foreign object there is a bleeding there there is a cut and bleeding it is venous bleeding you know it so apply direct pressure on the wound itself for how long 10 minutes why 10 minutes in the body we have a clotting mechanism that requires 10 minutes general knowledge so you can ask the victim himself to apply direct pressure for 10 minutes you tell him i am a first aider nothing to worry this bleeding is a venous bleeding it can be controlled easily you apply direct pressure finished so if the injury is in the limbs when we say limbs in medical term it is either your hands or legs they are known as limbs okay so when you apply pressure you raise the limb also if it is the bleeding is from the hand or leg you raise it above the heart heart level you raise it so that pressure will be less so the bleeding which is coming through the wound will be automatically reduced that is why you are elevating the limb applying direct pressure then elevating the limb when you apply direct pressure it is better to have a clean cloth or a dressing material or a pad or something you keep it and then and as a first aider uh, the principle is if we have a hand gloves use it that is to prevent a infection from the victim to first aider first aider to the victim okay otherwise you wash your hands cleanly with the soap then you can administer otherwise you can ask the victim himself to apply pressure you need not apply pressure you know the steps you tell him he is conscious okay so apply direct pressure elevate that is point number 2 point number 3 after 10 minutes if you find that bleeding is still not controlled for another 10 minutes you apply so if you see the the cloth or the bandage the dressing material or the pad is soaked with blood do not remove it apply the second cloth also second layer of cloth also second dressing material also again you apply for 10 minutes so 10 10 minutes twice thrice you apply it will automatically definitely will be controlled with this venous bleeding so you can uh, you are applying direct pressure you are elevating okay with that it will be controlled if not controlled you can apply the third step is indirect pressure so where do you give indirect pressure in the body we have 22 blood pressure points on the right side there are 11 and the left side there are 11 in my youtube very nice digest you can watch them with the there are pressure points i had given there you can watch them with the picture okay so you can watch in other videos also you can watch in the internet youtube so when you apply the indirect pressure also you can try to control the bleeding so with these uh, three steps venous bleeding 100% will be controlled if it is not a large uh, wound and all that you again apply antiseptic cream and cover it uh, with a bandage that is all you need not to go to doctor at all okay if the wound is big if the need some stitching etc if you are suspicious then you can take him otherwise not required Bleed, bleeding bleeding is controlled okay you had the antiseptic cream you applied and covered it finished that is all so this knowledge is first aid that everybody should have okay now we come to the next stage the arterial bleeding artery this is a little dangerous normally arterial bleeding will take place when there is an amputation a finger is cut a hand is cut a leg is cut then suddenly you will find lot of blood coming out of body so and this in this instance i will tell you in medical terms infant means 0 to 1 year 
the age 0 to 1 year the human you call them infant 1 to 7 years you call child above 7 years everybody is adult an 8 year old boy girl also an adult you and me also an adult okay so this you should understand and in the adult body we have 5 to 6 liters of blood okay and the child and the infant depending upon the weight the blood will vary quantity of blood will vary okay about 75 ml with every kg of the child 80 ml with every kg of an infant so like that there are things right so <clears throat> when adult who is carrying let us say five liters of blood and serious injury in accident you have put him in ambulance on the way about 50 percent or two third of the blood is coming out of the body is dead already that is why you should control the bleeding you should not you do anything don't allow the blood to come out okay so first aid for bleeding now you know apply direct pressure elevate indirect pressure finished apply direct pressure that is the number one formula for bleeding control apply direct pressure on the wound finished okay now arterial bleeding normally with amputation i said finger hand and leg and all sometimes artery just cut there no amputation but artery is cut how what is the symptom of arterial bleeding in any part of the body what is the symptom of arterial bleeding it will be pulsating what do you understand by pulsating i told you the tube which is coming out of the heart distributing blood to the entire body is artery so heart is pumping blood you know it is making a sound the pumping rhythm is there lub dub lub dub the same rhythm suppose in the finger if a artery is cut and artery bleeding is coming means it will be coming like this lub dub lub dub okay that is called pulsating you can identify artery bleeding so how do you control the same thing what we did for venous bleeding apply direct pressure elevate and indirect pressure but if all the three methods sometimes are in case of amputation it cannot be controlled if your leg is cut blood is just pouring like uh, you cut a plantain tree where direct pressure where um, indirect pressure and uh, elevation so what you do that is why there is a last resort for blood control bleeding control we apply tourniquet what is tourniquet it is nothing but you can improvise there are ready-made tourniquets available in the first aid kit you may not have it in the scene of accident so you can have a clean cloth suppose your hand is cut just about the injury two three inches above you tie a cloth you tie a cloth so tightly put two three knots inside a uh, fork or knife or strong wooden rod or steel rod then twist it then what will happen the knot becomes tight and tight and tight and totally not a single drop of blood will go beyond that point so that is called tourniquet that is the last resort for bleeding control okay normally in the amputation so whenever you apply this tourniquet there are some this tourniquet can be applied only in the limbs okay on the hand or leg nowhere else hand and legs only you can apply tourniquet nowhere else so whenever you apply tourniquet you write the time there so that when the obviously the victim will have to go to your hospital the doctor should know what time the tourniquet is applied because beyond that point of tourniquet no blood circulation there so all the tissues will start dying 
with this latest technology now in the medical technology whatever part the finger or hand or leg which has come out uh, when you carry the victim you keep take the item also whatever come out of the body amputated you clean them put in in the clean bag that bag a polythene bag a cover plastic cover that bag you put it in the ice box don't put uh, the part in in the ice you put it in a cover plastic cover that plastic cover containing this part you can put it in the ice box and keep it uh, out of uh, the victim's sight don't keep it in front of him okay so uh, behind him you keep it take a uh, both now they have technology to join it back also that is why they need to know what time you applied the tourniquet so this is all general knowledge this you can learn easily it is not difficult at all so bleeding control apply direct pressure that is the mantra you can control unless it is very severe like uh, amputation okay then sometimes you have nose bleed some people they have bleeding through the nose so what you will what is the first aid for nose bleeding make the person to sit down keep the head forward not backward forward keep the head forward ask the victim to pinch the nose means uh, close the nose ask them to breathe through the mouth for how long 10 minutes why for the blood to clot after 10 minutes if it is not uh, bleeding is not controlled again ne- next 10 10 minutes you give and this kind of nose bleeding if it is coming very often every 2 months every 3 months then you must consult a doctor otherwise first aid for nose bleeding this only make him to sit down head forward pinch the nose ask the victim to uh, breathe through the mouth how long 10 minutes finished that is all so so easily i taught you all the bleeding control you can watch many videos are there my videos are there i'd given 3 4 videos capillary bleeding separately venous bleeding separately arterial bleeding separately tourniquet separately so four videos on bleeding control is there you can watch them okay then you can watch sanjan's ambulance red cross all these people okay so this is all knowledge anybody can gather the ladies at home they should know you should not get alarmed for any minor injury suddenly carry the children carry the adult to the doctor why if you know first aid you know what it is you can treat at home so this is only a general knowledge about your body everybody should know okay now we come to the burns burns so the people those who are in the kitchen definitely they will get uh, burn injury once or twice okay they must have got burn injury so what we do they put in the they put some ink they put some various thing <laughs> on the burn injury <laughs> which is not correct okay so what is the first aid for burn injury like bleeding control stop the bleeding finished do anything stop the bleeding that is all bleeding control applying direct pressure stop the bleeding but uh, burn injury cool the burn finished how running water room temperature water cool the burn how long earlier day they used to say 10 minutes then later on they said 15 minutes now they are keep saying 20 minutes but the correct saying is as long as the burning sensation goes you keep the uh, burnt area under running water or you can immerse it wherever water is there the depends which part is burnt okay so cool the burn it is not 10 20 minutes time duration as long as the burn injury why i am telling you is i have a practical experience you all know Uh, we used to have a chapati maker which is uh, which has a bottom plate and top plate um, electrically operated okay you put the dough inside and press it uh, and uh, you get a 
round night chapati isn't it so i was making the chapati watching a tv some interesting program was going i kept the dough and kept the hand on top the top plate fell on my hand back of my hand i didn't realize until it was so hot then suddenly i took my hand the top layer of the skin is burnt so i was showing under the running water for half an hour one hour two hour, nothing happened i opened the fridge i kept some buttermilk packets some ice on top of that the whole day went in cooling that it is only a first degree burn 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes and all not enough at all it takes hours together but you have to be careful so to learn the first aid for burn injury you should know about the skin so we say first degree burn second degree burn third degree burn these are all inside the layer the top most layer then the second layer then the third layer if the top most layer is burnt it is first degree if the burn injury is little deeper the second uh, layer it is the second degree the third layer it is the third degree okay this is first degree second degree third degree what is the symptom of first degree burn redness the skin will be skin will be there intact but it will become red so that is first degree top layer of skin is burnt then little deeper inside second degree burn the top layer is burnt already it went to second layer so what is the symptom blisters will appear blister you know uh, consisting of a bulging part with the water content inside that is a blister okay blister and you should not break the blister okay that is a by nature Uh, the body has got that blister in case of burn injury to solve the problem only the blister is appearing you should not break the blister that is second degree symptom blister first degree burnt second degree burnt and third degree inside third layer of the skin is the symptom is it will be charred red uh, black in color or white in color so third degree skin if you wanted to burn it directly cannot go to third uh, third layer of the skin it will have to pass through first layer second layer then only it goes to third layer so you will find the symptom of redness blister then the charring so if you see that white color black color it is charring third degree burn it is if you touch that area you will get no, you will not get a pain surrounding area you will get very severe pain so for all days you will have to cool the burn only you will have to be very carefully keep the running water or immerse it in water these there are these days there are burn gels available they put some aloe vera gels inside wet dressing that dressing you can spread on top of this burn injury that has got the uh, property of drawing the heat away from the body okay then after taking the dressing and applying you will find some left out uh, gel also inside the packet as this dressing is drying you can pour that liquid also on top of this okay so cooling that is all then once it is you applied this running water or the dressing then you cover that area with the dressing properly or with a, a clean carry bag also you can cover it why because your skin is gone subject for in, uh, infection from the air so that should not happen so you cover it with a, a clean plastic bag or a dressing material whatever it is you cover it skin is gone so that is all you are burn injury first degree second degree third degree now very important thing in the burn injury treatment first aid is there is something called body surface area body surface area that means this first degree second degree third degree is okay it is going deeper in the skin but if large area is burnt in the stomach in the legs in the hands on the face large area then larger area burn means uh, it is problem they will go into shock 
okay medical shock 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 means uh, your organs are not getting blood oxygenized blood so that can happen even for severe bleeding also severe burns also severe vomiting also severe diarrhea also whenever there is a body fluid coming out of your body maybe blood maybe plasma maybe vomiting maybe your uh, diarrhea whatever you can you are likely to go into shock and next stage to the shock is death okay so you will have to be very careful if larger area of the body is burnt first degree second degree third degree is okay okay but larger area means is problem so you will have to treatment is same you will have to cool the burn and cover the body area cool and cover that is the first aid for burn injury but body surface area if it is large what happens you must have noticed if some larger area in the hand or leg is burnt or stomach is burnt you will find some white color liquid appearing like a sweat you know what is that that is the plasma that is the blood so that kind of liquid should not come out of the body which will lead to shock so that is why from the ship or from anywhere you wanted to convey to the doctor how much area is affected in the body by burns so body surface area is given by rule of nines rule of nine your entire body uh, is a given certain percentage 9% 9% 9% hand 9% legs 9% head 9% torso 9% like that you can see uh, in the videos you can see the percentages so that is how we report 18% of the body is affected by burns 9% of the body is affected by the burns so this palm has got 1% your groin has got 1% okay like that they give percentage of body surface area i'll tell you these days you must have seen some people challenging the authority go in front of uh, for example a collector's office district collector's office take a, a can of uh, kerosene pour it on top uh, of his body people will gather around him even media with camera and all standing around so this fellow they all will wait until is pouring uh, the kerosene and lighting the matches afterwards everybody will run video media fellow is taking the picture also he is not attempting to save the victim he is taking the picture the public are then trying to save what they are doing they are applying some sack or bed sheet or paper and make him to roll so he is saved but now what happened he put kerosene in the entire body and he lit the matches so he has got the maximum body surface area burnt it is first degree only not even second degree first degree but can you take him and put him in the swimming pool or bathtub or shower no why he will go into shock he will go into hypothermia then shock so that is why larger body area burn injury is dangerous than you are first degree second degree third degree and all when third degree is also worst injury but that you will have to do some plastic surgery and all that then you can do it but body surface area is fatal injury people can go into shock and death so that you will have to be very careful learn about this in other videos in my video okay right so we learnt now CPR, AED, bleeding control, and burn injury. One more topic we will discuss. Then, rest you can learn from the classroom. Whether you are doing elementary first aid or medical first aid, so I hope this introduction was useful to you. Right? Choking. So choking is very common. As I mentioned, the children swallow as they are crawling. They take some coin and put it in their mouth. Some marble they put in the mouth they choked uh, both the hand they will keep it on the throat and try to cough you know cough adult when having non wish heavy non wish chicken bone mutton bone stuck in the throat 
both the hand here voice is not coming ah, ah, like that they are making so choking also very serious so what is the first aid for choking abdominal thrust in technically we call hemlich maneuver in kg hospital dr bhaktavachalam is giving a nice demo in a video you can watch on the youtube dr bhaktavachalam from kg hospital okay there are other people also giving so choking is abdominal thrust the technical name is hemlich maneuver you learned that also for an infant how do you are going to demonstrate give the hemlich maneuver for the child how you are going to give for the adult how you are going to give okay normally for adult one arm you fold it like this keep it here under the belly button you keep upward thrust you give you stand behind and do this so you can watch that uh, dr bhaktavachalam video will come to know uh, so for the infant also they are showing for the child also they are showing right so these are all the things you will learn that is all the first aid if you know this uh, cpr ad bleeding control burns and choking restral like uh, am we were uh, fracture you uh, compression concussion these are all okay that you can learn from the book but main thing of this so albert einstein once he said what he said he said if you cannot explain simply you do not understand fully so whenever you attend any classes understand fully so that you can explain to others simply right so with that i will conclude this uh, first aid as i said in the freshers phases or introduction i recommend very strongly pondicherry maritime academy for doing all these courses you visit pondicherry pondicherry join pondicherry maritime academy the very good institute i strongly recommend there are so many courses uh, run you can apply through the website itself you go to their website pondicherry maritime then you can apply directly by then with this first aid uh, introduction i hope it will be useful to you so the primary survey consists of uh, the letters d r s a b c d d for danger r for response okay the moment you come to know there is uh, the victim is unresponsive then the next letter yes yes for send for help on board a ship you must inform from any part of from any part of the ship you inform the navigational bridge inform them there is an unresponsive patient here unconscious if you are not on board the ship outside you initiate the emergency medical service that is you call an hospital or ambulance then proceed for cpr without any delay okay that yes letter stands for send for help on board a ship inform bridge if you are outside call for ambulance inform the hospital and you start straight away start with cpr so now and un- after unresponsive your basic life support starts so the letter a is for airway so i explain to you how to clear the airway head tilt the chin lift okay but you have to be very careful if you suspect any if you suspect also if any spinal cord injury or neck injury you cannot do this head tilt and chin lift you can very slowly carefully you can lift the head backwards but chin you should not lift you hold uh, the jaw and bring the jaw downwards that is called a jaw thrust this is for uh, spinal cord injuries if, even if you suspect spinal cord injury or neck injury you will have to do this jaw thrust head backward movement and bring the jaw down so that you can clear the airway right so a a stands for clearing the airway if you see any visible items you can of course remove a false denture sometimes 
maybe they are blocking the airway some blood or vomit or some foreign body maybe they that you can remove but don't try to push it in okay that is a for clearing airway then b for checking the breathing so as i explained to you kneel down and keep your cheek towards the victim's uh, nose so that uh, if he is breathing that air will touch your uh, cheek uh, at the same time your eye should be looking at the victim's chest if he is breathing the chest will rise and fall so this is how you will have to check the breathing the allowed maximum time is 10 seconds within 10 seconds you check the breathing if he is not breathing the next letter c in many places c for circulation you will have to check the pulses uh, radial pulse in the wrist or uh, uh, carotid pulse on, on the sides of neck and all you can uh, you can check for the pulse but my advice is if he is not breathing straight away go for cpr c for cpr okay chest compression and uh, rescue breath so a b c the last letter d stands for get the aed aed as early as possible and connect it and follow the instruction so that is how you save the victim right so this is primary survey basic life support okay now you may be wondering what is the secondary survey if there is a primary survey there is secondary survey also so secondary survey includes your bleeding burn injury any other internal bleeding uh, these all you can check up that comes under secondary survey right now another important point is since uh, i explained to you about uh, severe bleeding control and burns for state you should also know about the shock so shock is the condition your circulatory system in not functioning or not functioning properly so that means your brain heart and other organs are not getting enough oxygen that condition is called shock so there are different type of shock generally the most important one is uh, severe bleeding severe burns severe uh, vomiting severe uh, dysentery all these your body fluid has escaped from the body so that time they are likely to go into shock okay so there are other uh, type of that uh, kind of shock is called uh, hypovolemic shock hypovolemic shock uh, when you are treating for severe burn uh, your uh, severe bleeding you make the patient to lie down flat and what is the first aid for shock the hypovolemic shock what is the first aid uh, is a simple three steps you will have to do patient is already lying on his back just raise point number 1 raise the leg 10 to 12 inches keep a stool or a chair or box or anything available uh, near the scene you keep something raise the leg so why we are raising the leg you should know already the brain heart and other organs are not getting enough oxygenized blood so if you raise the leg maximum blood flow will be to the organs so remember as a first aider you should know all the organs are above the waist below the waist you got your thighs and legs that's all so by raising the legs you are sending less blood to the legs and more blood towards the head so that is the idea of raising so point number 1 shock first aid is raise the leg 10 to 12 inches point number 2 cover the body with the blanket or bed sheet or anything available a overcoat or even newspaper because he is going to feel cold so severe bleeding you are treating you are at the simultaneously you are treating for a shock you don't allow the patient to go into shock the treatment for shock and treatment for the pre condition of shock is same raising the leg covering the body and third important factor in the entire first aid you all should remember one factor that is reassuring the patient okay anybody getting an injury 
severe injury, meeting with accident or severe sickness, heart attack, cardiac arrest, etc. So, when you reassure the patient, so half of the problem will be solved. So, this is one important factor all the first aiders should uh, remember. Talk to them, assure them that you are a first aider and you know what to do and you can help them, he is going to be alright. So, this reassurance is one important factor in first aid, you should know. Right, there are other uh, uh, kind of shock like uh, uh, for uh, septic shock, okay. Like that, there are many different type of shocks you will learn in the classroom. Right, if the heart is uh, got some diseases or heart failures, they got that kind of shock also is there. The symptom for shock will appear after some time. You cannot wait for the symptoms of a shock. You don't allow the victim to go into shock. So, whenever you are treating for severe burn or severe uh, bleeding uh, control, that time you treat for shock also. The step is very simple. Raise the leg, cover the body, reassure, finished. That is all. Okay. All right. Now, one bonus point I will tell you which is not told in the classroom. There is internationally there is one good samaritan law what is that good samaritan law so when you hear the word samaritan uh, related to bible right people will be thinking that but this good samaritan law is internationally is there present in all the country including india what is that you are a first aider you are going to, for example, you are going to attempt a first aid for an unconscious patient, you are doing the CPR and you are connected the AED. After doing everything correctly, you know, uh, confidently you did systematically everything correctly you did, but at the what is the end result? The patient has died. You cannot, uh, you could not save him. So, in that circumstances, what will happen is, the relations, friends and whoever is there, this patient was all right. Only this man started uh, pushing his heart very hard and fast and all that. That's why he died. So, they will try to put the blame on the first aider. So, first aider is the good Samaritan. So, to protect the first aider, there is a law. So, nobody can blame you. Nobody can uh, call you to the court and uh, no. they cannot frame a case case against you so the, to to protect the first aider there is good samaritan law existing in all the countries including india so nothing to worry you can try to save the person it is not that easy even with cpr aed many patients will die that is not your fault you try to save him understand so that is all the introduction i gave for uh, i'm giving for first aid Rest you learn in the classrooms and first aid you learn thoroughly and that uh, Indian medical manual, Indian medical first aid manual, uh, you try to download, learn from there, teach your home people, teach your friends, te teach all the elderly people, young children, everybody should know. So, you will have the confidence. Okay. By then, see you with the next video with the introduction of uh, that personal survival technique and PSCRB together, okay, proficiency in survival craft and rescue boat and uh, personal survival technique together I will give an introduction. And uh, also I request all of you to support because a lot of uh, time is involved and I am spending a lot of time in making the videos and you, uh, your slides and all that. So, I had given uh, my uh, number. Uh, you can support me. Thank you. Bye.